Welcome back. So we've been talking about the Fourier series, and in the last couple of videos, I showed you how to compute these in MATLAB and in Python. And now what I'm going to show you is what can go wrong when you're using a Fourier series on a discontinuous function. So in the previous video, we approximated a triangular hat function that was not smooth, but it was continuous. There were no jumps in the values. Now what we're going to do is approximate a hat, a top hat function, where the function jumps uh, in these two discontinuous points here. Okay, so the function's going along constant, it jumps to another constant value, and then it jumps back down, uh, back down to zero. Okay, so we're going to, again, code this up in MATLAB. Really simple, we're gonna have a domain um, from zero to 10. In this case, it doesn't really matter what your domain is, we're just gonna do from zero uh, to 10, I think. I've chosen uh, 1024 points in, in the middle of this, so it's a nice number divisible by four. Uh, and I'm going to define my function pretty simply by uh, setting it all equal to zeros, and then taking the middle half and setting it equal uh, to one here, okay? And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to approximate, I'm going to compute the first 100 terms, uh, so not 20 here now, we're going to compute the first 100 terms uh, in this Fourier series by, again, just to remind you, we're going to compute these coefficients a, k, and b, k, multiplying our cosine and sine modes by taking the inner product of our function with those cosine and sine modes. And because we're doing this in a computer, these are not... Um, analytic functions, these are vectors that, that are, are my function evaluated at those 1024 points from zero to 10. Okay, so f is a vector, and then I have a cosine vector and a sine vector, and I'm literally computing their dot product here, uh, the sum of f dotted with uh, that other vector. That's the dot product. And I have to normalize uh, by the length, by two over l, and by my delta x that I'm using to approximate this inner product. Okay, and so once I add up those first 100 terms um, in my Fourier series, I'm gonna plot my original function and my Fourier series. Okay, so a pretty simple fun uh, code. And this is what you get. So you see that there are kind of qualitatively the right features. Um, you know, the white uh, top hat function is what I want to approximate. The red curve here is my 100 mode Fourier series. And you can see that it gets the right general behavior, but around these corners, there's this really interesting ringing phenomenon uh, known as a Gibbs phenomenon. So this is really, really important. You'll see this all over the place, uh, this Gibbs phenomenon, Gibbs's phenomenon. And essentially what it tells you is that near points of discontinuity, your Fourier series, if you ever truncate it, so if you add it up, all infinitely many sines and cosines, this would go away. In the limit as, as you know, this 100 became infinity, and I add up infinitely many cosines and sines, this Gibbs phenomenon will in fact go away. But anytime I truncate my series for a discontinuous function, I'm gonna get this, this uh, ringing Gibbs phenomenon. So I'm gonna get these kind of oscillating um, artifacts at the points of discontinuity, okay? And the reason is, is because these uh, discontinuous points, so the sine and cosine functions are smooth. They're, they're smooth functions. They don't have any discontinuities. And so the only way I can truly build this discontinuity, this, this jump, is by adding up sines and cosines of all frequencies in just the right proportion so that they stack up to form this perfectly sharp ridge. And if I drop even a few of those terms at the end, I'll get uh, this, this ringing because they're not perfectly canceling out to form that steep, uh, that steep cliff. Okay, so that's Gibbs phenomenon. You see this all the time uh, in numerics. You'll, you'll, you'll see it now that you know it's there in, uh, in numerics sometimes. You'll see this ringing because you're approximating these discontinuous functions with a truncated Fourier series. Okay, so important to know about. Um, Something you'll see is that if you increase this number uh, from one to 100, if you increase this to something like n over two, uh, where n was the number of grid points I have, so let's say I add up 512 of these. In this case, I actually do a really nice job. So if, you, if you're approximating your function on a discrete domain with n points, 
now you can get away with adding up n over two of these sines and cosines, and you finally get rid of that, that Gibbs phenomenon. So this is uh, closely related to the fast Fourier transform and the discrete Fourier transform, which is how you compute these uh, on, on vectors of data efficiently. And we'll talk more about that, that later. But I just wanted to point out that you know, since my, my data vector f and my data vectors of cosine and sine only had 1,024 points, if I used um, n over two modes, I actually get a really nice, nice approximation on those discrete points. Now here's the rub. If I doubled the resolution of my domain, now this approximation it actually has this massive ringing happening. It's just that you can't see it. We're only plotting these uh, kind of odd points where it perfectly lines up. And so we're not actually plotting the peak points, but if I doubled the resolution of my domain, for example, then you'd actually see that between the points I'm plotting, this thing is still ringing quite badly. Okay, so it's really a, a dangerous phenomenon that you have to be aware of is this, this Gibbs phenomenon. Maybe I'll just run it back uh, so that you can see kind of uh, what it looks like. And I thought this would be fun to actually plot this as a movie. So here what we're gonna do is we're just gonna plot uh, now for uh, m equals one to 100, we're gonna keep increasing the order and see how the Gibbs phenomenon gets worse and worse. Okay, so this is just a cool movie you can download on our book website and you can kind of see this Gibbs phenomenon getting worse and worse, um, or at least getting more localized to the corners as you increase the order of your approximation. Okay, so the first mode is just, you know, kind of this bump in the middle, and then as you add and add modes, uh, they're kind of canceling out to make it flatter and flatter on the top, but then that concentrates the ringing uh, in these, these corner regions. Okay, really important uh, property. Interestingly, you'll see this, I'm gonna do this example later, Remember, I can, I can Fourier transform this triangular hat function, but if I use the Fourier transform to approximate its derivative, which looks like this uh, top hat function, I'll get Gibbs phenomenon in the derivative. Okay, so I'll show you that later when we use Fourier transforms uh, to approximate solutions of partial differential equations. Okay, thank you. <laughs>